All right, hello. <coughs> One thing, <coughs> pardon me. Um, in my last, when I talked about the basic circuits or the basic circuit, the series circuit, and the parallel circuit, I forgot to talk about something that's kind of that is critical. They were saying what a D, what DC is, which is direct current, what AC is, which is alternating current. Easiest way to think about it, DC is what a typical automobile right now runs on, uses for electrical system, not the EVs, the ICEs, the internal combustion engines. AC is what your house works off. Most places, there are some places, um, remote areas where people have DC set up in their homes. That's not typical. In your typical city or suburb, it'll be on alternating current. So there's always exceptions to the rule, but with the rule, home and car. Edison was a proponent for DC, Tesla for AC, which I'm probably sure you've seen in, on television and other situations. We're still going to use uh, Ohm's law while we talk about the rules of a series circuit. In a series circuit, current, which is measured in amperes using A as its symbol, is constant. So the I total equals, so I total equals I1 equals I2 equals I3 equals I to a number, an infinite number. Um, so that means that the current for your source or your total is going to be equal throughout the entire circuit at every load, every position. Volts. When we talk about volts, which is represented by E in Ohm's law, volts um, are additive. Uh, each total equals E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus E to the N. I know someone's going to start saying, start throwing things in about Kirchhoff's law of voltage, Kirchhoff's law of current. We're not there. I'm not worried about it. All we're going to talk about is the rules. If you understand how these go together, it'll work well. Resistance measured in ohms, which uses the upside down horseshoe, the Greek letter omega, is additive in a series circuit. So R total equals R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R to the N, which is infinitive. Now, some of the other things we're going to need to talk about is voltage drop and potential difference. Potential difference is what V, when you talk about in science class, when they teach V, IR, or V, AR. V equals AR, V equals IR. Potential difference is V. Voltage drop is the voltage at each load. That's your voltage drop in a series circuit. Now, they'll also talk about equivalent voltages in some books and equivalent current. This covers that. So if you have the, a book that has these in it, if you go through and use these rules to find equivalent current and equivalent voltage, and voltage drop, you'll be able to do it. It's just different ways of talking about the same thing. Only thing I'm concerned about you knowing are the rules of a series circuit. So I'm going to draw a series circuit up here. Then we'll do the analysis of it. And believe me, this is very basic what I'm doing. I'm not doing anything that is going to be too off the hook. Because it doesn't need to be at this level. All we need at this level. So showing up, yep. Is to get the basic understanding. And that's what this is at. This is, when we talk about learning, we should talk about crawl, walk, run. We are definitely in the crawl stage here. We're not worried about running. We're not worried about doing all the craziness. All right. So my total voltage, what I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with 48 volts. So E total in this chart will be 48 volts. Uh, we'll do two ohms, four ohms, and six ohms. So it's going to be two ohms, 
four ohms and six ohm. So when solving this circuit, the way I will attack it when I'm doing it and I see this is I'm going to add R1 to R2 to R3. So I'm a two plus four, which is six plus six is 12. So that's going to give me an R total of 12 ohms. Once I have that R total, then I'm going to use Ohm's law, the variation of I equals E divided by R. E divided by R gives me four amps. First rule of series circuit. Actually, I want to do change these colors up. Twelve ohms, four amps. So, using the first rule of a series circuit, current is constant. So that means the current at the first resistor is four amps, the second resistor is four amps, and the third resistor is four amps. I have it. Now I use Ohm's law, E equals I times R at each location, so I get. 8 volts, 16 volts, 24 volts. Now, when I add those together, 24 plus 16 is 40, plus 8 is 48. So you see, all of them work out. This is a very simple one to do that I laid out. Um, they can get The math can get a little more interesting when you start throwing... Um, Things where you're going to get decimals or we're using milliamps and kilovolts and you're doing unit conversions which we'll talk about in another at another time but right now all i want you to be able to do is set this up understand these rules follow the see how the circuit set up do a basic analysis if you need to you can draw this chart or table whichever you choose to call it i enter i use both all the time um so set this up so you put in your knowns and then you work, solve your way through for your unknowns so you can solve this it's a to me this is a more basic way of doing it and it's taking me some time um to really come up with this way after teaching i was trying to t i actually i came out of industry right into the high school classroom without ever taking an education class because i do teach in career tech i'm a shop teacher so I was teaching electrical theory to students the way I learned it in my apprenticeship, which was way more go, go, go. So over time, I've broken things down. I've learned to break it down like this with those rules and with this table or chart um, to work it out. It seems to work more effectively. It's easy. It, it really helps out because anytime you do circuit analysis, organization is going to be key. It's like troubleshooting, which you're going to find out further as you go, if you are, say, in the electrical field. Troubleshooting is about organization. This is a way to, this in series circuits, you have, and when you do circuitry, circuit analysis, you even cir series circuits, you have to have organization. You have to have a methodology that you're going to follow. It can't be willy-nilly and random, or you're not going to be able to follow the system. It will not necessarily work out for you. For you. That way you're not going squirrel and chasing things off in the corner. Okay, so that'll do it. Until 